Morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. I've just been and cut some cable off a spool of uh, three cuff white flex that I've got down the side. Because yesterday Stuart picked me up another Clark pump. So what I'm wanting to do is utilise one pump for caustics and one pump for acid and rinse. So I don't have to dick around changing the pump every time and uh, at the end of the day with the caustic I like to leave the caustic in there because it doesn't corrode the insides of these stainless steel pumps but the peracetic acid will corrode a little brass ferrule that holds the impeller in place on these particular Clark pumps. Now the pumps are extremely powerful and more than enough for CIP in a microbrewery even up to perhaps 10 barrel scale or bigger uh, but for us, yeah easily handle the 500 litre size and uh, the only drawback with these is they're obviously not uh, designed to handle hot wort you're alright with the cleaning products and water of course they don't need any of that but you don't want to be using uh, you don't want to be using this to pump work around the brewery. So what I like to do when I first get hold of one of these pumps is get her out of the bag, just give her the old once over and then uh, a couple of things that we have to change on it. So these come with a one inch BSP port and what I like to do is stick a valve on the outlet and of course just a uh, cam lock fit in on the inlet so I'll just get some PTFE tape and we'll do that. The trouble with this is uh, I'm going to have to put a stem in between these two because I don't have a connector that's got a male 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 connector this is a male female so I'll just pop a half inch uh, nipple in there when I get round to it but you get the idea we we'll kind of have that on there we we'll kind of have that on there if you know what I mean. So that will be how we're going to connect up the hoses to this bad boy. And then, because these pumps never ever have a long enough cable, what I like to do is go into here, which is a bit of a pain in the arse because they are the Y connector screws. Uh, once I've got this off, I'm going to change out the cable for this nice like, length of flex so we can reach round <laughs> sailor and uh, connect to the wall and then reach to any pumps that we need to reach to so I'm just going to pause the video and we'll get this casing off right let's get zoomed right in on the workpiece and uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be doing so these pumps, 61 litres a minute, easily do that. 46 metre head, which is really high, and they're 1200 watt, which uh, is more than enough power for what we need. So now I just need to try and get, get these screws out without losing them on the floor. There we go. So yeah, they use these horrible freaking Y head screws and you need a special, obviously, screwdriver bit for them. They're a pain in the arse, but because I've got the screwdriver for them, I will keep them in. So let's just get this back into shot. Right then, so this houses the capacitor, and uh, this is the cable that we want. Strangely, it goes back to normal screws here. So we'll just get a posi. So there's two posi screws on the strain relief for the cable and then weirdly again we go back to the Y-shaped screws holding the uh, waterproof cover which houses the capacitor and the Chinsey Chinese connectors 
but all in all, I, I really can't complain about these pumps. They uh, are a hundred quid a piece and can be seen as a consumable. So if you get two years out of it and you're using it every day like I am, then I think that you've got pretty much a good value for money piece of equipment there. Right, there we go. So let me just pull these screws out so we don't lose them to the inside of the pump housing. And there we go. Right, we're in. So we'll pull out the strain relief. We'll pull off the two connectors. Come on, lad. They're bleeding tight. I know that much. There we go. Right, that's those off. And then we just have to uncrimp this earth cable. And that should just slide straight out. There we go. So that is the cord that was on the pump. So I'm going to save. Oh, let me just cut that off so I can pull everything away. I'm going to save these little rubber grommets, noting which direction they went on in. And then we'll get our new cable and we'll slide them on first thing so we do not forget because they help keep the whole thing watertight inside the pump and we're going to strip a fairly generous length of the flex so we can get in to the wires and then we've got a couple of spade crimp connectors here which we'll just stick onto the live and neutral cables. Right, I think that might do it, Gavner. Yes, it will. So we'll pop our live and neutral on here. Doesn't really make much difference which round it's going on because it's AC after all. There we go. And then the hardest part of all, believe it or not, is packing everything back into the housing. So we'll put that there and I'll probably go straight ahead and put the strain relief back on. And then at least I'm not going to have the cable popping out on me every two minutes. Right, after much wrestling, we've pretty much got this back together. I had to go and check an alarm as well in the brewery. So, yeah, it does make you feel like you're Tarzan wrestling a bloody alligator or crocodile. In the Amazon or wherever. It was but the Amazon's not in Africa, is it? Was Tarzan from Africa? I don't know. Anyway, we've got it back in, so we just need to put this back on to the pump, put a plug on the other end, and then we can go and stick some fittings on there. Right then, so what I decided to go ahead and do is quickly, mid-brew day, weld up a fitting that's required. So, uh, yeah, if it focus on it, there we go. So I don't have to use a little bridging stem now. I welded the damn thing straight to the main one inch fitting. So we've got a one inch to half inch reducer. And then we just need to put a bit of PTFE on here. I know somebody's gonna say, why don't you use the yellow PTFE. Is it the airline PTFE? Well, I've got loads over there, but I've also got loads of this stuff. If you look up 
on there, look. You see it all? But I want to get rid of this stuff first, so that's the plan. So we're going to pop that on there. That'll wind on nicely, and then at the same time, we're going to pop on our stainless steel ball valve. Just get rid of a little bit of this excess thread tape. Stuck to my hand now. <laughs> right. There we go. So what I'm going to do is wind this on until it's in a position that I'm happy with. Let's give a few turns to the basal platen first. Make sure that's all nice and tight. She's Elm. And then this one. And we'll just get probably another. Come on. Oh, God damn. I was hoping I took around another there, but that'll do. That'll do it. I did want that on the other side, but hey ho. Right, let's take her outside, charge her up and get it into recirculation because I'm just about ready to start putting some acid into the fermenter. Brew day number three in the bag folks, just as quick as that. So we are at the moment transferring through the Platex, plate heat exchanger, Platex, uh, via this dairy hose that we use into FE3, which has been cleaned out and is currently sitting at 24.5 degrees. That will come down rapidly though. So, while I've been toying with the idea of uh, CIP pumps and recently looking at maybe putting a pilot kit in here, perhaps against that back wall. Uh, I thought I'd try and combine the two ideas or two concepts and I'm now thinking about also as another project building a CIP skid. So these Kilderkins that I bought on a liquidation auction, you know when I got all the Boggart hole casks up there, well this was part of that, we got four of these big bastards. and. Uh, well, I'm never going to use them because we don't do kins. They won't go into the cellar. Well, they will, but it'll be very difficult for us to manoeuvre them. And uh, it'll just balls the whole schedule up by filling these anyway. So I thought, well, they're a bit too beat up and battered to turn into maybe a, um, a pilot kit because it's not exactly a shiny, wonderful looking piece of equipment if we were to do a, you know, a brew in the beer garden on it for instance. But these stainless steel tanks are good enough to have a second life as uh, chemical tanks for a CIP unit. So you'd have three tanks on there, one would contain caustic, one would contain acid and one would contain water. Two of them would have heating elements in to heat up the caustic and, and the rinse water. Uh, and then also you'd mount the pumps on here somewhere three pumps one for each one and Maybe a fourth pump as a scavenger pump to you know bring the spent fluids out the bottom and back into the tanks and The fact that we'll be able to recycle cleaning liquids thus extending the life of the liquid and how much cleaning potential it has I'm sure that if I was to build something like this it may pay for itself in a year or two in terms of chemicals saved and of course time saved would be on another awesome commodity if you like so toying with the idea so i thought i'd get them down and have a look how they sat on this trolley to give me an idea on how much space i'd require i don't think much more than a pallet is going to be needed to be fair so yeah food for thought folks could be another potential project coming up in the near future so I've had the big old drill out, look at that for a, a weapon, eh? 
She's got some length to her, but not so good on the girth, boys and girls. Not so good on the girth. But yeah, the idea of that was I had to drill a hole in that brickwork there and uh, through the wall there. And then that pipe runs all the way across the back of here, behind all these shelves of stuff. And it goes into the cold room. So you know those trays that I put in the cold room, the guttering trays? Well, they can now, uh, they can now drain out of the cold room and then it goes outside into the back garden and into the soak away for the uh, guttering and what have you. So I'm just going to set, I'm going to set the, uh, the control panel to turn off at about 7 o'clock tonight. Give that a good clean. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'm going to bugger off home, folks, because I've had three good back-to-back -back brew days and at the same time I've managed to do quite a few other jobs as well. Um, and then tomorrow I think we'll get we'll get that scaffolding moved out from under there and we'll get these into position and then maybe we'll start doing doing a little bit of work on these tanks. How do you fancy joining me for that? You know what to do folks. Uh, we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog.